You, you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's just this, this, this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. Understood, understand this plan is put in gear to educate teenagers through its peers. The guests are teams, the hosts are teams, produced by teams, so let it be watched by teams. The situations that affect us are the topics we discuss on hard couple. People, this is Mubarak reporting for TMC News, and we're going to be talking about the 2018 gubernatorial elections. Eight people running for the post of governor in the state of Illinois. The 2018 Illinois gubernatorial election takes place as part of the 2018 Illinois general elections and elect the governor of Illinois. The Democratic and Republican general primary elections will take place on the March 20th, 2018, and the general election will take place on the November 6th, 2018. So we went around Truman College asking people for their opinions, and this is what they had to say on the 2018 gubernatorial elections. The 2018 gubernatorial election, first off, love that word gubernatorial. Uh, secondly, I know that there's a whole bunch of Republicans and Democrats running for it. Um, of course, the Republicans have been uh, kind of in battle the past two years with the whole stalemate between Democrats and Republicans. Now we have the Republicans who, or sorry, the Democrats who uh, don't look as good as they should on paper. Uh, I, I guess the teacher unions voting for, uh, was that J.B. Pritzker? Um, we'll see how my vote turns out. Because I'm tired of um, these idiot politicians <laughs> ruining our country. <laughs> If I could vote, I mean, I honestly don't know who's running, so I wouldn't be able to give you an answer for that. So although there's been a lot of debates about the 2018 gubernatorial elections, uh, I just want the people at home to get registered and go vote. You could check out your polling areas on headcount.org to know where in your area you could go vote. So uh, this is Mubarak Ashiru reporting for TMC News. So thank you very much and have a good day. Today we're going to be exploring what adults and teens have to say about the elections coming up. What are your views on Obama and Romney so far? Well, so far there's a lot that needs to be considered with both of them because of the tax situation with the middle class and also with uh, Medicare and Medicaid. I'm a very liberal person, so I, um, I mean, I guess I live in Chicago, so it makes sense that um, I feel like I'm almost uninvolved, but it's because I support Obama so much that I'm like, there's no way, there's nothing that would get me to vote for um, Romney. Last election seemed like we had more open avenues, seemed like it was just kind of the whole world was before us. And this election, it seems like things are a little bit more stifled. It's a little bit more, you know, there's a lot of doors that are closing and I don't feel like, you know, anybody's there to open them again like Obama was in the beginning. 
Uh, this time, I think the economy, because it's been four years since the last election, and the economy still is lagging, so I think this time the economy is a bigger part of the election. How do you think teens should be involved in the voting process? Um, honestly, I think everyone should be involved. I think it's, it's good to get started early. I think they need to volunteer. Definitely, I think you guys need to volunteer. And I think that they need to get on to all the social media outlets and kind of let their views be known. The biggest thing is just forming your own opinion. And whatever that opinion is, whether it be liberal or conservative, um, that the important thing is to consider what you find important and what country you want to build. Thank you, Bradley, for, that, for those interviews. Now, let's take a look at what teens at Community TV Network had to say about the election. If Obama wins, I think that we're going to, us high schoolers are going to have a better chance to go to college in the future. But as Mayor Romney wins, he kind of going to take away our funding and our scholarships, so we're not able to go so. If I was 18, I would vote for Obama most definitely because he seemed like he's really trying to promise a future to folks of the youth. Uh, he said that he was going to put more money towards the funding of college education, which I know a lot of us struggle with when, when uh, you come from not so pretty neighborhoods. And actually Mitt Romney's, uh, his thought about this was taking funding away from programs that he believed were not necessary and in order to do that they'll have to go to a test. And so far, I believe that he's going to be the one behind the test. If I was 18, I would vote for Barack Obama because Romney has taken away my PBS kids. And I am a really big kid, so... <laughs> who says that you could take away uh, a program just because only one man says that it's important? And I think really highly of after school matters. Because <laughs> that's the program that really helps students like me. This has been a hardcover news production and until next time, have a good day. Yo, what's up? I'm Alvin Casaberry, one of the senior editors of Hardcover. And on today's show, we have a group discussion on why it's important to vote. And three members of Hardcover with their own personal letters to the new president. Peace. Voting from a teenager's point of view. Hi, I'm Val Thompson, and this is how I cover. Today we're here with Edgar, who spent the summer registering voters, Rachel, who recently turned 18 and now has the power to vote, and Marvin, who is also 18 and feels it's important to vote. So Edgar, tell us, why did you spend your own time registering voters? Well, because I thought it was important. I thought it was important in terms of having a source of power um, having a voice in society and letting it be heard. And, I, and as a um, register officer, I thought that um, registering voters was very, very important, like I said before, because, you know, a lot of people are always saying that um, they don't like what's going on in society. They, and, you know, they don't want to do anything to change it. So why not get into the system, find out the system, get educated on it, and rearrange it to your benefit. So that's why I think it's very important to, to vote. And where was the registration station at which you were working? Well, it was located downtown in the loop of Chicago. Um, it was called CEIU, ACORN. Um, what it was is it was a, a non-for-profit organization. They sponsored um, register officers to go out at different sites, different locations to register voters. Okay, and what did the process consist of? I mean, like, what kind of ID would you need to register? Well, basically what you would need is two pieces of identifications. Um, what? They can be picture identifications or just with the current address located on it, so. Okay, Rachel, is it correct to say you've recently turned 18? 
and can yeah. now vote. Mm -hmm. You're registered to vote. Yes. Who or what motivated you to register? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't going to register at all, but um, I talked to my advisor in, at my school, and she asked me if I was going to vote, and I told her that I wasn't, and she was the one to convince me. She told me that it would be very important for me to vote, and she asked me that how did I feel about women's women's position in the world and I said well they don't have any much and so she asked me to so she asked me to um to register so that we could change it so that we could have women in power and without that we're not gonna you know without my help they're not gonna get up there so she really convinced me into doing it and about two weeks later I went and registered so do you feel it's important to vote and why or why not I feel that um it is important to vote in a way but then it confuses me because I'm like, you know, we'll probably put somebody up there, okay, with my help, and what if the person doesn't come through with its promises? You know, we're stuck with that person up there until the next person gets up there, makes the same promises and doesn't fulfill the promises either. So I'm like very confused about it. I'm like, you know, like if I don't vote, that person will probably still get up there anyway and not do anything about it. So I'm really confused whether I should or whether I shouldn't. but. Everybody tells me I should, so I do. So is it safe to say you don't have any faith in the political system? Yes. Okay, Marvin, I'd like to ask you the same question. Do you feel it's important to vote, and why or why not? Yes, it's very imp um, important to vote because um, it's a privilege. Because a lot of people in different countries, um, they don't get the right to, um, uh, how should I say, uh, get the right to, you know, speak out you know and I think I think it's very it's a power thing so I think it's very important to vote. Well since you feel um, voting is important do you think it would matter say they lowered the suitable age for voting to 16 do you think 16 year old person would be mature enough to vote? No I don't I think because by the time you reach uh, 18 you're more knowledgeable about what's going on and and if we change it right now it's in a, a constitution if we change it right now then we could then um, we could change anything and I think we should just keep it where it is you Rachel, know, 18. Oh, I'm sorry okay Rachel yes. I'd like to ask you the same question do you think it would be alright to lower the age to say 16? I don't see anything wrong with a 16 year old wanting to vote or I don't think that oh, just because you're 18 you have more brains than a 16 year old. I think that the reason why they made 18 the age is because here they believe that when you're 18 you're an adult and they figure that only adults should vote and therefore I don't, I don't personally agree with that. I think that a 16 year old has the same capacity as that of an 18 year old. That's true, it doesn't have anything to do with age I would say. Well, I mean but then I mean like I said you know if you um, that's true I, I could agree with you to a certain extent, but you know, like I said, if we limit it to um, 16, then then you could um, put other things in the Constitution. You know, you could open it up, and you know, we should keep it closed because. It's but a isn't lot of that issues. what our um, Constitution needs to get open up? Yes, but but we also have to protect other people too. You know, I mean, then we could. Um, um, have flag burning, you know, as one of them. What does sixteen-year-olds voting have to do with flag burning? And excuse me. Well, I, I'm just saying. I mean, if we allow sixteen-year-olds to open, I mean, to uh, vote, then we could uh, use other issues. Okay. You know, put it in a constitution. Excuse me. Can I answer this question? Yes. Uh, I feel that it comes along with experience too, as Rachel said before. That's true. They think you're an adult when you reach the age of eighteen years old. So. They think you have enough sense to really, really know what's going on in society. So you don't think so, a 16 year old will be mature enough to make a political decision like who they think should be president or anything? No, I don't think so because for one thing, they're still in high school. And with my personal experience when I was in high school, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't worried about what was going on in society. As long as me and my family wasn't affected by it, I didn't care. But if they was affected by it, I still didn't know because I didn't know anything about politics. But isn't that a problem? Shouldn't our youth know I what's going on? I said I was on? like that, right. Shouldn't right. they have the opportunity to make a choice in what's going on? Right. I agree 100% with that. Because that's I'm why 18 you have, and I'm still in high school. Excuse me. Yeah, that's why you have shows like this, Hard Cup, for mm -hmm. teens to speak out. And I believe that. But politics um, is a little bit more complicated, I think, you know, because 
when you're dealing with politics, you're dealing with the whole country. And, and because oh, it deals yeah. with the Anywhere whole country. from local to national elections. But I because mean, it deals with the whole country, I think right. it's very it's, important that 16-year-olds know what's going on. Right, but and I'm that they should participate of what should is to happen. Right, so they should, should be but more I'm political saying. political education in schools? So political. 16 to 17 year olds will know what's going on in the political system? Yes, they should, yes. because they don't I have agree. anything like that. No, they don't have facilities like that okay. in high school. And, and, and that's people, why I said that um, mm -hmm. most teens really don't know about politics. I don't and think anybody really, really knows. I don't think anybody really knows. You just know from what you hear on television, and half of what you see on television isn't exactly what's going on. We don't really know enough about these candidates except what they say. And like I said, they get up there and they, what, they, what they said, they don't do. But, so but, you get to the point to where you don't want to vote because you don't know enough about it to begin with and you don't really think it's a big deal because nobody sits down with you and talks to you about what voting is about or anything else for that matter. And if more, if more people would educate people more on this in schools at an early age, when they reach 18, they'll know whether they want to vote or not and not wait till they get to the age of 18 and say, well, should I vote or should I not vote or what? Right, right. I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but you can kind of like self-educate yourself too. That's yes. why they always say, as a teenager, you should go to the library. You should read the newspaper. You should, uh, should want to know what goes on in society. So let's say you're 16 years old, right? And you pick up a newspaper. You say, oh, and you, you, you know, you read it on your own. Nobody had to tell you to pick it up or nothing. Yeah, and but you, you, you read the youth it and is saying, used to Oh, this is kind of interesting. But Nobody youth, never told me about politics. But the but youth you, is not going to do that, see, because the youth got so many things going around and so many things happening. They figure that politics is for adults because that's what, what that that's has what been should. dictated to them from the beginning. Wait they said politics is an adult thing. Politics, oh, politics, you know, is what adults talk about. They find it a boring subject. I did. I never really got interested into politics till I hit 18 and said, oh, now I can vote. And so then you get involved and then you wonder, and even then, you don't know where to look. I mean, besides turning on the television, but you don't believe everything you hear on television anyway. Right. You know, politics shouldn't be exposed to a teenager when, he's close to, when he or she is close to reaching 18. They should be exposed to it when they're younger and not exposed in, the, in a way that they, that they, you know, like, you're not old enough to vote, so don't even think about it. No, well, you're going to be old enough to vote, and this is what you should know about voting. Well, you ever thought about it in this aspect, that when you're a teenager, you have peer pressure. You have all types of pressure. You're just really entering in adulthood, right? And you have all these different types mm -hmm. of pressures around you. Mm -hmm. And politics, the only thing that would do is like add on to it. So they think that the more you experience life, mm -hmm. this, this is from my aspect, from my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, the more you experience life, the more you get out and learn about things and read more and go to school. The time you reach 18, you know, you would probably have enough maturity to make a right decision to register the vote to, to put in a right candidate that would do well, see, what I you have or a, she I have will, will. a problem with that because I don't believe that maturity comes with age. Because it, you can it, be 24 years old and be the most immature person in this world as you can be 16 and be more mature than the 24-year-old that is supposedly mature because of his age. Okay. Therefore, I don't believe that you have to be a certain age to be mature enough to vote. I mean, I'm sure I know there's a certain age where you just can't, but um, I, I don't think that. I think it depend on, uh, depends on the person. And maybe it's true, maybe you can't, you shouldn't vote at the age of 16. Okay, I don't have a problem with that, fine. But the person should start knowing about right. the political. But that's what your family is there for. That's what school is there for. But not always. That's what the library is See, there for. See, because the schools don't tell you nothing Well, you're supposed nowadays. to ask questions. That's the whole point. They just you know they get wait. a day off. Right. But they just know they get so a day off school for elections, and that's right. all they know that's about it. it. You don't suppose to wait to somebody like always tell you something. You're supposed to try to find out for yourself. I mean, but if you don't you, know nothing about it, you're not going to find out about it. You know what I you mean? You know something about it. You watch TV, right? You, yeah, but you, like you, I said, all, they've, they've, all my life I've always figured that political, that it was for adults. It's something boring. It's something that you don't even bother to watch. I mean, come on. If you're going to put Bush on Channel 32 and you got the cartoons on Channel 50 and you're 16 years old and you have a choice, they're going to go to the cartoons. They're not going to bother to sit there and watch Bush on television because they don't know nothing about it. All they know is that there's this man up there talking. They don't know how important it is because you don't get enough, you don't get enough educated about it before time. You don't start worrying about it till you hit 18. I know 18 years old right now that I've asked them if they're going to vote and they say no. Why should I? You know they don't know enough about it. Can I ask you this? This is a little bit getting off the subject, but why come they say you have to be 18, 18 years old to buy cigarettes? Why come they say you have to be 21 years old to buy alcohol? Why do you think they make them laws? This is this is getting off the subject a little bit, but it comes with experience in life experiencing life you know you have to grow older you have to learn things you have to you know but they don't look at it that way they look at they put it under ages well if you're 18 then you're old enough to smoke but not old enough to drink because 21 we th we feel is old enough to drink see they, they're putting age on what they feel is proper you know well, what I mean yeah maybe because it's dictation of what yeah, they feel right it is dictation but I'm saying that 
um, you have to be mature. This is what we're talking about. So you just can't I make a decision. You, you can't make an important you. decision like that. I agree like with the fact that you should you... be mature, but I don't agree with the fact of you placing an age on maturity. Because I think mature comes from the person Experiencing, itself. Experiencing, right? From the person. A 16-year-old can be how mature. How do you come mature? I mean, how do you I, come It all mature, depends right? on your environment, who, how your parents raised you, the background you come from, how you feel about yourself, first right. of all. That's a big one. And how you feel yourself. And also how much you know. And right? how much you know, but you don't know anything unless you're exposed to know. You know, you just that's can't why you're supposed to find out. Say the voting age okay. was raised to 21. You think that would be more suitable than the age 18? No, no. because no. she still opposed that. Now, personally, me, I, would, I think that 18 is, is the age. Yes. Because, like I said, you graduate out of high school, right? You're going into it college. Shows Supposedly. So, because there Supposedly. still are people in high school at 18. Well, you it know, shows that's because they're not doing what they're supposed yeah. to do. But well, the average really. kid graduates out of high school when he's 17 or 18 years old. Unless his Assuming birthday is late. Assuming he doesn't run into problems like gangs yeah. right. and other things that right. cause someone to I'm drop I'm saying out. average hardworking student in school. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have, really have to be average or hardworking and do that. Yeah, you know? to be able to make it out of high um, school. Oh, you don't? Then why come, I mean, you don't have to be smart to graduate out of high school? Well, you no, really you don't. Well, you really I'm don't, in a sense. That, that's going off the subject. Okay, okay, Sorry. getting back to the question. You said if they raised the 21, you think that would be more suitable? Than the age of 18. No. Um, no, I think they should leave it at 18. They should leave it. I but, think I think you should be able to do everything at 18, you know. I, I mean, I don't whether it's voting, uh, drinking, or I mean, it depends on how I mean you you use it. Well, personally, I, I really okay. about the 21 years old waiting to to drink. I mean, there's 16 year olds, 14 year olds doing it, so that law ain't doing nothing no. except for something? just a piece of paper and just dictating something yes. that that's not happening. Can I ask you something? So that's another good example. Now, when you're 16 years old, right, you need to be 21 in order to purchase, right, alcohol, mm -hmm. right? So you have 15-year-old kids out there, right, um, um, drinking, smoking, alcohol. using drugs, yes. right, mm -hmm. and it's not legal. Then how did they find out about that? Because of the environment, right? Because mm -hmm. what they was exposed to, right? Mm -hmm. We exposed to politics. It's just that you're not eager enough to try to find out about it on your own. Or no you, you one's think, eager enough to expose it but to they you. Shouldn't, yes. they, nobody exposed drugs to you. Nobody came up to you. I of don't know that. Of course they do. Of course I, I'm they saying, do Nobody never came up to me You got saying, drug dealers in every corner. Right, you but, got drug dealers in every right, corner, right, and that's I'm all they see. So if you see that, and right. that's all you're getting, you know you're going to try for it. It's like sticking I, a I lollipop in front it. of a baby and saying, look, here, see, it looks good. I mean, they're going to go. I mean, every teenager, even if you don't try it, you mm -hmm. look at it and you think about it. And if you're not talked to, uh -huh. if your parents don't tell you, look, this is what drug is all about. This is this, this is that, and this is the way, and this is, this is the effects of it. If you're not educated properly on drugs, you're going to try it. Because you I need didn't. to know for I yourself. Didn't. I, I, didn't. I didn't. I wasn't educated on drugs. All I when knew that first, drugs was harmful for your health. Exactly. You right. knew something about drugs. Therefore, you weren't going to try it. Right, right. Okay, well, if a teenager yeah, right. isn't exposed to what, polit what, to what politics are about, they're not going to try it. Okay, what are the commercials for? What are the newspapers? They have what each candidate stands for. Like, the, you watch the debates on TV, or they show it on TV. It's, it's your responsibility, if you watch it or not, to yes. want to find out something a little bit about each candidate, right? Yes. So I think research. that it's kind of your fault. You have to yeah. do your if own I'm research. If I'm interested in it, life, how can I be interested in it? Life don't expose you to everything. Sometimes you have to go out and get it, expose yourself to it. You have to go out and experience things But something things so yourself. broad as, as politics, like I said before, right. and a subject that everybody finds boring, how can you expose right. that to a teen? How can a teenager just go out and say, oh, this is interesting to me? I mean, no, you got to make it interesting for a teenager. you got to sit your teenager down and say, you're getting close to being 18, and I think there's, that these are several things that you should learn about. So basically, parents and schools should take more responsibility in educating children about politics yes. and voting yes. rights. Yes. I think, so I think if you're not sure on whatever's going on in society, it's good to ask questions. It's always good to learn something on your own. Yes. Most, most of the time, you know, some, most of the things you learn anyway as a teenager, you learn on your own. Yes. So, I know I so politics isn't it's different. Fine. It's just a more important aspect of life. But see, um, in that aspect, when you have a teenager and that teenager doesn't know enough about, for instance, sex, that, that teenager and, and she ends up pregnant and stuff, who's she going to blame? She's going to blame the person that, you know, she didn't know enough about it. But she knows but if she has her, sex, she knows the consequences. She's in danger, she knows right? the consequences, she's but the, you don't look at the consequences until later. You have to teach, the, you know, you teach a kid to walk, you teach a kid to speak, you teach a kid, That's why you know, you have to teach a kid. Age. You just have to teach. But some of the words yeah. the it's kids all about learn, teaching. they learn it on their own, right? They watch yes. their parents and they watch but everybody around them But that's just the point, Edgar. They shouldn't have to learn on their own. Why? They should be exposed to God gave you your own comments. Well, since God gave everybody a brain, things He gave everybody a brain to think for themselves. 
you shouldn't have you shouldn't person. have to need nobody to 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 to, to sure. put something in your head because you That's should learn on your own or get educated in order to learn I agree something. with that. I agree that a teenager should learn several things on their own, but they should at least be exposed to it. Like, this is politics. It's up to the teenager whether the teenager wants to vote or not. That's when the, when the thing comes in. I can decide for myself whether I want to vote or whether I don't want to vote, whether it's important to me, whether I want to learn more about it or whether I don't want to learn more about it, but it should have been exposed to me long before. In closing, Edgar, I'd like to ask you for a few words that may convince someone in our viewing audience who hasn't already done so to register and vote? Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, registering to vote is very important because, like I say, uh, voting is a source of power. And um, I hear a lot of people saying they're a victim of the system. You know, when things don't go their way, when something happens in their community and something and, 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 or if something's on their mind and they're confused, they don't understand why things are the way they is. You know, they always say they're a victim of the system. Um, I want to say that um, if you want to change the system, you have to get into it. So voting is just one aspect of getting into the system um, so that you can be heard and so that you can change things uh, for your benefit. Thank you. I'd like to thank Edgar, Rachel, and Marvin for being here with us today. Thank you. Uh.